Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're looking at some additional issues that I've seen brought up in various comments, replies, and requests, but which I haven't already done videos on. Last time, we talked about the effectiveness of prayers made by unbaptized people, and this time, why doesn't God do miracles more often? Well, in order to understand this question, we first need to know what miracles are. There are a few different definitions, but the first one at Merriam-Webster will do for our purposes. An extraordinary event manifesting divine intervention in human affairs. In short, something that A. doesn't normally happen and B. implies action by God. Some examples of this would be the flood during the time of Noah, the parting of the Red Sea, and the resurrection of Jesus. All of these are things that don't normally happen, but did happen because God chose to act. Now, ultimately, God is a free agent, so any conclusions we draw about why he takes or doesn't take a certain course of action will be estimates based on the information we have, rather than proven facts, in the same way they would be for determining the motives of anyone. However, there are many clues that we can follow to try to comprehend a part of God's reasoning in this case, and one of the most important is the nature of his goals. The Lord delayeth not his promise, as some imagine, but dealeth patiently for your sake, not willing that any should perish, but that all should return to penance. 2 Peter 3 9. Is it my will that a sinner should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should be converted from his ways and live? Ezekiel 18.23 Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, and why will you die, O house of Israel? Ezekiel 33.11b Here we see someone who is willing, even eager, to save everyone, but who nonetheless is faced with the reality that not everyone is willing to be saved. Some people simply won't accept his help, or refuse to face the reality of his existence, or what that means for them. This means that God is more likely to take the actions that he needs to take in order to save as many souls as he can, but is also able to recognize when a certain course of action won't be helpful and avoid it. Now, there's an interesting comparison that can be made here. Miracles are things that don't normally happen. Is there anything that God does for people which would be miraculous if it happened less often? All expect of thee that thou give them food in season. What thou givest to them, they shall gather up, when they openest thy hand. They shall all be filled with good, but if thou turnest away thy face, they shall be troubled. Thou shalt take away their breath, and they shall fall, and shall return to their dust. Psalm 103-104, 27-29 In short, our very survival is itself a gift from God. The fact that we continue to live from one day to the next requires him to continually act to bring that about. So why doesn't this have the impact on us that parting the Red Sea did? In both cases, God isn't visible, and in both cases the effect is visible, but we can't see the cause of the effect or the connection between the two with our senses. So, what makes these two things different from each other? The answer is that one of them, human life, is something we see every day, while the parting of a large body of water like the Red Sea isn't. This shows us that as human beings, we tend to grow accustomed to things we see on a regular basis, to the point of taking them for granted. Since God's goal is to encourage people to turn away from sin and towards Him, to influence their decisions without destroying their free will, therefore, it makes sense to suppose that there are certain miracles that He simply doesn't do all the time, this is because, if he needs to encourage people to change quickly, shock them into reforming their lives, he has to have some event that doesn't happen all the time, and which therefore people aren't taking for granted, but which he can bring about whenever he wants to. This is exactly what miracles are. One interesting thing about this is that in heaven, with everyone already being saved, God no longer needs to win souls because they're already won. So the floodgates are essentially open, and God can give people whatever they might need, even through dynamic, miraculous means. This is important because many people can't find fulfillment in a life of normal events. With their soul saved, the freedom to be given true fulfillment by God can be restored to them. In heaven, God can provide what people need and desire and still have twelve baskets left over. 
Next, what reasons do we have to believe in the death of Jesus? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.